So LEGO Fortnite just dropped, and as a crafter, I had to check it out myself. My goals are to max out a level 10 village, get the best tools or gear in the game, I still don't know how that works, and beat all three biome bosses, with each one being stronger than the last. How will this game compare to my normal everyday Minecraft? Watch the end to find out. Day 1. This isn't Minecraft. For once, I'm playing a different game, and I have to say, it looks beautiful. Now this is still meant to be a survival game, so I had high hopes. First things first, I talked with Cuddle Team Leader. She told me to gather wood and granite. For what, I don't know. But if I run around the map, I can pick up sticks for wood and rocks for granite. But I did get distracted by some Lego cows. And when I pet them, they gave me some milk. Not exactly how we do it in Minecraft, but close. When out of nowhere, I was just attacked. I gave him a good left, right, good night and killed my first monster. I kind of like how small the spiders are in this game. It makes it more natural, and honestly, the Minecraft spiders are nightmare fuel. Thereafter, I pet a chicken and got an egg. It looks like this game doesn't promote the killing of animals, since you get better stuff with them alive. How sad. Hunger is also a big part of the game, so I ate a pumpkin while getting hit to half a heart by a spider. Then Cuddle Team Leader ran to the rescue and one-shot him. Good to know the NPCs actually fight with you. I continued collecting on day one as I attempted to find a solid spot to settle down. I know I'm meant to start a village early, but I always have to find the perfect spot. I was instructed to put down a campfire, which I'm assuming helps with my temperature control. Then I unlocked a crafting bench and a shack. But as the rain came in, I didn't have enough wood for those builds. I got back to gathering, learned I can actually punch trees, and after I had enough wood, I built an entire shack out of Lego. It was pretty easy to understand as well, but it does feel similar to settling down in a dirt hut for the night. I got myself a crafting table and a trusty axe to survive the lack of sunlight. With that came the cold. Apparently being out at night in the rain wasn't good for my health. But I can now craft a torch, which I threw in my offhand and continued to gather resources throughout the night. I also started my first village, which is like a totem that draws in NPCs to your village that work for you later on. Or sprint to be part of a dance party. The rest of the night was resource gathering to upgrade my village to level 2. And once I had it, I can now recruit people like this hayseed fella to help me out. I start off day 2 by of course trying to collect some wood, but was interrupted by this spark thing. It ran away from me for a while, which gave me hope that it would bring me to some sick loot. And I was wrong! I got feathers and seeds out of a Fortnite-like chest. Okay, sure, I don't want any diamond tools or whatever the upgraded stuff is in this game, but really? Seeds? That needs a buff. Then I was attacked by a roly-poly. He actually thought he could take me on, which was cute, but I'm a Minecraft expert. After he was taken out, I found a house with a seemingly normal spawn for TNT. Yep, you know what's gonna happen. Back at the base, I needed planks for the level 3 village upgrade, so I used a lumber mill which turns a bunch of different wood types into other objects. Although even if I had enough resources, I need village rating, which just means stuff placed down. So I put down a grill and started work on a double wide shack. The material list was massive for a guy in this stage of the game, so once again, my night was full of gathering. Finished up the shack the next day and upgraded to village level 3. Then the pink bear told me I should invite someone to my village, which just seems like free rent, so I ain't about that. Instead, I learned I could upgrade the crafting bench, but I need one more shell, so I hunted down the roly-poly fella for its bounty. And with a level 2 crafting table, I can now make green tools. That's cool. I'm assuming those are like stone or, or maybe iron if we're trying to compare them to Minecraft, but the recipe required a new wood that I have yet to see, not root. Alongside that discovery, I unlocked charms to help with health, which I'm assuming are similar to armor. It raises defense and gives you more hearts. I made the new axe and thought I would use my new lack of time to furnish the village. I put down another chest and built a second bed. Not that I need it. However, Hayseed required that for his recruitment. So I can stare at him while I sleep now. Let's talk jobs. Instead of that rent-free policy I was talking about earlier, let's get you to work. Gather some stuff for me. And I won't kill ya. The next couple of days, I had to find out what not root was. Earlier, I found this cave, so I headed inside, and it looks like I figured out the progression system. Because right away, this wood was naughty. Green wood now acquired. But the rocks inside this place were still out of my reach. 
It's like a wood pickaxe not being able to mine iron in Minecraft. So instead, I just spent my time and my axe on getting as much knot root as possible. Side note, while editing this video, they updated the game a bit, giving tools a 30% more durability buff and taking away the durability glitch that I take part in using this video. So if things look a little bit different, remember I was recording this on literally day one of LEGO Fortnite's drop. Out of the caves and back at base, I got to see my villagers fight off the night baddies, which made me question my area of residence. I don't exactly like the place I'm in, so I went out at night to look for a new village spot. Close to me was a lake I hadn't noticed before, which was perfect for the new build, as it takes away some of the natural enemy spawns and gives us the ability to fish which isn't in the game yet, and just looks 10 times better. Day 7 was spent tearing down and gathering resources for the move. I'll have to re-upgrade my totem and crafting bench, and even though that sucks, the view will be worth it. I whacked down our first build and moved to our prime location that night. Once again, I need a high village rating, and Hayseed probably didn't say I was a good boss after that whole bed thing. So I went ahead and put down another Dublé shack, and that was added alongside a village upgrade. We're level 2 again. And when putting down my crafting table, I actually kept the upgrade material, so I was able to make it level 2 again. Slowly, I am regaining the village I've just torn down. Speaking of torn down, it wasn't. I still had the Dublé house to murder and a hayseed to fire, but speaking of ill-important employees, I was able to hire C-Day for this new village. I really hope he shows up to work since it's been... 484 days since his last upload. You think he'll mind this bed thing? Hayseed probably liked it, so he will too. Oh, and the servers crashed a bit that day, which wasn't great for the video, but a lot of people were playing at the time, so I get it. I don't do this on purpose, okay? But days 9 through 11 started with me petting sheep. It's better to keep them alive, so I'm holding back my murderous intentions. The wool they have is apparently very important later on, but just not right now. After that, I was able to make myself a green pickaxe with that knot root I collected earlier. I made it into a rod and then used the bones spread across the ground every night to make the tools. I also had a ton of wood on me from the move, so I made a new house, the porch shack. Almost no difference from the past huts I've made, except there's a porch. Back to the mines, the game isn't as free roam as Minecraft, so I do have to stick to the progression system. I need marble, this white rock inside the grassland caves, and for the first time, you get to see how I healed my tools throughout the video. All I had to do was put down a chest, add my items, and break the chest with my fists. Now everything is full durability, but like I said, it's currently patched. Also, these caves were not messing around. I kind of forgot how low on hearts I am, and when taking on the skeletons, I'm fine. Twice. I'm fine. I got that low uh, way too many times in here. But, but look at the war I have to fight while I'm down in these caves, okay? And I'm not used to this type of combat. I am shocked I survived, which is more than I can say for all the ores in this cave. I left this place barren. New item unlocked, the stone breaker. This thing allows me to make slabs from the different stone types I collect. Then I use the knot root to upgrade my village to level 4. Not sure what that does, but okay. Then I was back on the collection grind. I need more logs to make more planks, I need these planks to make chests, and I needed these chests because I'm sick of carrying around all this clutter. Organization is key, especially in this video. I really use it a lot, all the way through. I, n I never falter. <clears throat> uh, and, and through the night, I headed to the desert, my next hurdle to jump through. Upon entering, I found a wolf that wasn't meant to be messed with. Brother could two hit me. So I had to run to a building, but while healing up, a desert spider ran up on me, giving me the realization I can't survive here. Continuing the fight, I somehow warded it off to regain my hearts and fight once again. The spider was fierce, but doable. And I tried to throw TNT at the wolf, but totally botched that mission. Runaway time until I hit the desert roly poly. Apparently stepping on the sand meant my certain death, but I had the crab stunlock the entire fight and got my first blue item. However, the desert gets really hot and I need a charm or a smoothie to survive it. No, literally, I actually do. I had to go home and discovered the cool-headed charm, which gives me heat resistance. But I need more sand shells for that, so for the time being, I spun some silk and made health charms. That way, I'm not permanently at three hearts. And after eating a snowberry, I could tank the heat for about two minutes while I followed a spark. The last time I got a terrible chest, and this time 
it was the exact same. Like, why are these so bad? I fought a few more sand rollies for the shells and the server crashed again. That's why I can't move at all. Yeah, I can still dodge for some reason. Days 13 and 14, I was back to checking out the desert because I need more sand shells. Since that server crashed, it reset my world a bit. Like, I'm backtracking now. I fought quite a bit of mobs, but in that time, I figured out that there were these ore-like things in the desert. I got amber for the first time, which is something I can actually mine with my green tools. I took a lot of time to get as much as I could while I was here, still fighting off the mobs in the meantime, so I could eventually get those cold charms. I only returned home with about 4 shells and 22 amber, which may seem like nothing, but trust me, the amber drops are very limited and take forever to mine. All this means is I'm still far from a crafting table upgrade and my desired charms. But I wasn't done yet. The desert heat is still mine to survive. I've got snowberries and a will to live. With the hearts that I have now, I went back in to take on some of the mobs that previously scared me, gathering up 8 more sand shells and 8 wolf claws. Yeah, I already took on that wolf that haunted me before, and after learning their movement, it was actually a piece of cake. Back at base, I made three cold-headed charms, as I'm assuming progression for the game stays consistent. I needed the grassland surface for materials, and then I went to the grassland caves, which got me to the desert surface. And now, I should be looking for a desert cave, as long as the cycle actually repeats. But one thing about those caves is, they will be hot. Much hotter than the surface. By a lot. So I went around collecting animal drops, and then made a juicer at the end of the night. That way, I can make snowberry shakes for the caves. I wasn't kidding about those smoothies I mentioned earlier. Like, I'm actually gonna have to drink a smoothie to survive heat. That's how it works in real life, right? The next couple of days, I'm heading back to the desert, but without heat exhaustion because of those charms. I need to go back to grab some more shells, claws, and amber for future village upgrades. At this point, the charms have helped a lot. The roly poys in the desert are no chance. Like, they can't even touch me anymore. I stunlock them every time. And the wolves... They only have one move and I can avoid it. At this stage in the game, the hardest thing to get for me is Amber, because every single time I mine one, it only drops two, and I end up leaving with like 23 or something. That's nothing. Although, I was grabbing all this stuff, and I don't actually need it for my upgrades. I mean, I do for the crafting table, but that's a little bit separate. When I checked the village totem, I still somehow needed Notroot and Marble. I grabbed the wrong stuff. But from that trip, I did get 11 more shells, 32 claws, and 23 Amber. Like I said, Amber is really hard to collect. Then I went back into the caves to grab some Knot Root and Marble, because I don't plan ahead. But now that we have the village upgraded to level 5, I still don't know what this gives us other than dancing villagers. But I've been in this hideous village for way too long, and I've actually been unlocking log cabins the entire time. So it's time we build one. Shocker though, I, I don't have an infinite amount of wood, so I had to grab some before I started work on the thing. And honestly, it was kind of small. It's bigger than anything else I've had so far, but I wasn't going for like a huge cabin right out the gate. And I'm just going to stick with the pre-built stuff for this entire video because honestly, I don't think I can do much better right now. I have to really explore the game before I get a touch for building. Day 20, I for some reason decided to follow another spark, which led me to literally nothing. I... I don't even know how to explain this. Then I finally finished up the cabin and realized it was kind of far off the ground, so I needed some stair support. I think this could be fixed in the game because it's... I have to jump up here, I don't think that should happen. Then I went around changing the walls and the inside so it was more of an open floor plan and I could get in and out easier. Also through grabbing other stuff, I had unlocked a gem cutter, which is something I can use to cut amber for future upgrades. Speaking of that, I've waited forever to get granite slabs, and now we are village level 6. I'm decently keeping ahead of the village rating, so I can almost always upgrade to the next level as long as I have the stuff, which right now I don't. But the crafting bench is another story, as I was finally able to unlock the blue axe and pickaxe, things that should hopefully help me in the desert caves. With this blue axe, I was able to head into the desert and grab flexwood, which is found in cacti. Now this stuff is specifically good for the fun things in the game, like a dynamic platform, wheels, tires, that kind of stuff, which I will show you later, because trust me, it's hilarious. And then when I got back to base, I checked out some of the new cabins, and uh, they look great, but I'm a brokey. I cannot build these right now. Then I went ahead and made my first blue pickaxe, but while I was making it, I found out that I can actually get a glider. I have no idea how this works, but I really want it. 
I went ahead and made my first loom, and then used that to make wool and silk fabric. I finally figured out what I gathered all this silk and wool for. Then after a really long time of waiting, I grabbed the glider, which adds one sword, and I don't know what that is. But the glider works just like redeploy from Battle Royale, so whenever I'm about to die to fall damage, which hasn't happened yet, I can just glide. Days 24 through 25, I was kind of on my resource grinding days as I just went to the grassland caves and mined them up a ton. I don't remember having a specific purpose in mind for this, except that I needed all this stuff on hand for later builds. So having a ton of knot root and marble, check. Day 26, I saw a supply drop in the sky, like an actual supply drop from Battle Royale. It was really cool watching it fall from the sky because it was like this Lego thing and when I opened it, it was decent, I guess. Again, I still think they need to buff the drops and maybe add some tools or charms to these, but it's still nice. Then I went around and foraged for some animals and looked at all the bases on the map, or like broken down homes. I was looking for anything useful, but th these are worse than the supply drop or any of the sparks I've gotten. So I just retested out dynamite to make sure I knew how it worked. Once I had a full inventory of stuff, I was back at base and sorted it all out. And I now have the will to build a full on cabin. I want to place a huge cabin here and take down this awful village I'm in. Day 27 through 28, I totally recorded myself gathering wood, and definitely didn't forget to hit the record button. But I did get all of this for the log cabin build. Again, the building mechanic in this game is great, but it's also pretty time consuming, so yeah, I went through and I built the entire cabin. It's not exactly stressful, and I don't really have to tell you how I do it, because it's a blueprint in the game you can do for yourself. So the stuff that I did actually do was customize it to my needs by adding some doors, some window gateways sort of deals, and by adding stairs up to it because again, the foundation was way too high. Then I determined that this place would be like my equipment department. I don't really know what all of these things are, but I'm moving them in here because whenever I need to cut wood or make granite slabs again, I'll do it in this building. It's a lot better than running around my base trying to figure out where I put the juicer. See, now I remember why I went and grabbed all the knot root and marble. I needed to make medium chests. These are like the next stage up in chests, and trust me, I need it for my organization. Because again, I stick to it the entire time. I never give up this organization technique. Like, I, I use it the entire way. Nothing ever gets misplaced. <clears throat> then once I was done throwing all my stuff in this building, I got rid of all those crappy starter builds. I mean, sure, they're great. You can kind of make a base out of them, but... Uh, no one really wants to stare at these anymore. But when I broke all the buildings, the NPCs actually didn't have beds anymore, so I made a small little lodge and crammed five beds inside. That's the amount of NPCs I can have if I get a level 10 village. And I really didn't want to deal with the NPCs having to have their own space, so the smallest possible cabin worked for me. Then I added in a watchtower. I mean, I don't really need it. There are crossbows in the game that I haven't invested in yet, but specifically I want it so I can jump off and glide. And by the end of day 30, I had recruited the best NPC to the village yet, Peely. My boy don't know how to speak English, but his gestures are awesome, and of course, I put him to work. Now, days 31 through 38 were some big few days for the boys. I'm grouping all of these together because of just the sheer amount of stuff that happened during this session. Off spawn, I'm in the world, all right? I'm looking for some stuff, and I find a llama, a freaking llama, okay? Like, the cute little llama from Fortnite that gives you a ton of awesome stuff doesn't give you cool, awesome stuff. All right, well, for once, it gave me some decent things. I got some cheese, some pepper seeds, claws. Like, you know what? It wasn't as bad as my past experiences with finding stuff, but it, it was still pretty bad. But I'm here in the desert for a reason, okay? We're going for amber and then headed to those caves. I've got me the blue picky, I can go in there now, I can grab whatever is inside those caves, and I am very, very interested, but you know what, we grind up some amber beforehand, okay? These desert caves look the exact same as the overworld ones, but when you go inside, this place is full of lava and a ton of different ores, okay? We unlocked obsidian, we grabbed some copper, we found ruby, and this thing called bright core. I really don't know what it does right now, but I'll tell you later in the video, we get some lighting stuff because of it. Now these caves are massive, and this glider comes in handy, alright? Like if I'm trying to get from one place to another, I'm good. I can just jump off a staircase and we're good to go, we fly away. But I don't know how long I'm able to stay. We got three cold-headed charms, alright? Like the lava ain't touching us unless we jump in it. But could the lava one-shot us? I, I really don't know. I don't want to test it, so we're gonna head out of here and go join Levi, the duo, for the rest of this video.
I wasn't planning on this being a duo video, but my boy is back at base and I'm ready to join him. However, there was one thing standing in my way from getting back home. A brute. This is the final boss in the video, okay? The I'm on day 38. I'm nowhere close to the ability to fight this thing off. But I'm gonna try. I got a green sword and the will to live. So I started learning his movesets and actually doing pretty well. There were a couple big attacks that he sent my way, but I'm able to dodge in this game and I learned that that's basically everything to me. But since I had very awful equipment, this took forever. I couldn't even talk to my boy Levi because I'm in the middle of this stressful fight and he's trying to call me on Discord. After a while, I did finish off the brute and we got our first brute scale from actually killing one of these guys. Now throughout the video, there are two other brutes that I'm going to have to fight. This was only the grassland brute and it was the easiest one. That took me like 20 minutes. That's not good. But when we got back to base, I hired myself a Meowsicles, upgraded our village to level 9, and we got Levi, the duo. My boy is here to help me out throughout the rest of the video and the first thing I put him on was to make the biggest possible house that we've unlocked the entire time, Lonely Lodge. Yep, he's gonna build up this entire platform while I don't do anything. I mean, okay, I do make the village nicer. I go over and add another watchtower. It's kind of fun to just have them. I don't need it at all, but again, jumping off and gliding is fun. Along with that, I end up making the campfires a little bit more habitable, like add some chairs and stuff. And when he's almost done with the lodge, I go ahead and make a garden by the side of it because I guess we can grow those seeds that I don't want. Then at the end of day 38, Levi and I upgrade the village to level 10. Finally, we're done. It all happens after we've entered these desert caves and that's really all you need to get to level 10. So the rest of the game progression can be at your own pace. The next couple of days, the boys were headed to the desert, but at first I wanted to make Levi a glider because Traveling in the desert is a lot easier when you can use the gliders for movement. So after he had it, us desert boys went back into the caves. My last time in here, I wasn't able to grab a ton of stuff because, well, I have one inventory. But now that we have two, we can carry a ton back and we need it all for the crafting bench upgrades. With his glider going crazy for travel in these caves. I'm avoiding the mobs, I'm avoiding the lava, I'm grabbing stuff. It's great. Honestly, this has been a really fun game to play. So Levi and I headed back to base and we went ahead and checked the NPCs. Throughout the video, they've actually been working for me behind the scenes and when I checked what they gave me, I got one of like everything that they could get and that's awful. I don't need one item. I don't even know why these guys work. They don't do anything. Then I went around and grinded out the resources for this blue charm of resilience. We need wool thread, copper bars, obsidian slabs, and sand shells. All the stuff that we have. So now that I have it, I have 13 hearts and 17 defense. I honestly don't know how good that is, but it's sick to have because I don't think I'm going to take a ton of damage anymore. Day 43. After doing up some research on these charms, I want a blue inner fire charm, okay? We're going to be headed to the cold biome soon, and this is the only way to survive. Well. Of course, alongside getting a spicy burger, which is the smoothie equivalent for the cold biome. I went around and grabbed all the stuff that I needed for it, and thankfully throughout the video I had collected chests for the flower, and now we've acquired spicy burgers. For some reason, when I'm in the desert, I drink a smoothie and I'm nice and cold, but when we go to the cold biome, I eat a spicy burger and I'm nice and warm. It's a very interesting way to do that. But during that time, Levi finds a box. I don't know what else to say. He's, he, it's, there's a, it, I, I throw it in the water. I don't want it. I just throw it away. You know, throughout the entirety of the video, that box is sitting in the water. I, I just didn't want it on my land, okay? Then he throws a dance party with all the homies and I upgrade the crafting bench to get purple tools, which now requires frost pine. Uh, all right, all right, it's time to do something fun. We're gonna make an airplane. I grab myself some silk to make balloons, cook up some torches, grab some wood, and I put down my dynamic platform. This thing can do about anything. You can put wheels on it, thrusters on it, 
balloons on it, anything you can imagine. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm cooking up an aeroplane while Levi grinds for the purple axe I already have. Oh, and I also may have ordered food during this time, so uh, I'm not AFK, you are. The next couple of days, we're going for Frost Pine with the aeroplane, okay? I land it, and Levi just tosses my plane around. Like, what is that all about? Bro, just messed up my build like crazy, okay? But we loaded up the chest with some extra resources, and we went up to the top of the sky. We flown up with the boys. I put on the thrusters so we could turn, go over to the Frost Pine and grab it up, and Levi fell off. My guy just... I, I don't even know. He's just going to glide away, all right? He's going to go to the lower part of the frozen section while I try and make it up to the mountain, okay? But I maybe I glitch off. You know, it could happen. I turn the craft and make my way over to the top of this mountain, okay? It's crazy looking, and it's really fun to use this plane. And I had to have one of the craziest landings of all time. I made it, and it's like even with the ground, which means I can just get back on. That never happens. I was finally at the top. I needed to be here, okay, because look at all this frost pine. I started cutting it down, and now I have the purple wood. Oh, and uh, there was a frost brute, which is the most powerful mob in the game to date, so um, had to avoid that guy. But I do stay up here throughout the night and collect as much as I possibly can. And then when I return to the airplane, um, it fell into the world. How lovely this game is. Sure, there are a ton of bugs, but I didn't expect that. However, when I did glide back to base, we used all the stuff that we had gathered to make the first grand chest. This has even more storage than before, and I'm really excited about it because I need a lot of storage. Now, after losing the airplane, I wanted to figure out how all this stuff worked, okay? Because the last time I flew it, I had to have a thruster on the side and it turned, but it also activated the other thruster. It was a really weird process, okay? Like, you can't choose which thruster to turn on. So I went through a bunch of processes, tried to combine different dynamic platforms, had thrusters that were, like, tried to be gatekeeped on top of the dynamic platform. That didn't even work. They just, like, phased through all this stuff. I don't even know what's happening here, okay? But me making an airplane, it, it just doesn't work. I, I don't know why. So instead, I saw a loot drop. It dropped from the sky, and I went over to see what was inside, and shocker, nothing good. Then I headed out to go check out one of the caves, but I accidentally went into a frozen cave. The inside of this place looks sick, but it does kind of resemble the grassland caves. There's no, like, ice water I could fall into, which wouldn't really make sense, but I think it'd be cool. Other than that, though, I unlocked sapphire and iron. Those are the two ores in these frozen caves, and for some reason, when I got back to base, I didn't actually pick up the sapphire. I apparently left it in a chest while returning home, okay? I sat in these caves for however long, mined a bunch of ores, ran back to base, and forgot one of the ores. I've got to be the best player. Days 52 through 54 were all about not root and marble mining, okay? The reason for this, though, is because the lonely lodge that I made Levi make is going to be our massive storage room. I'm gonna start organizing chests. We're gonna use the medium chest, the green ones that you guys have seen before for all of our material gathering. So of course I need more knot root and marble. But after three days, I had a ton of material to get to work on these medium chests. Now I need wood and granite. I'm really just trying to bolster my mats, all right? I don't really know when I'm gonna need to crank 90s, but it'll be at some point. Not really, the, the real reason I need more wood and granite is because first off, I do wanna have extra resources on hand, but I'm also going to go for the manor builds, which is a pre-built system that you get by making a level 10 village in the desert. Which means I have to go through the entire level 10 village making process all again. You can imagine how much wood and granite I'm going to need for that. Day 57 was more collection, but when I got back to base, I wanted to see how the NPCs were doing. It's been a long time since I've collected from them, so I'm really hoping that they're going to have a lot of stuff. Eh, <laughs> not... Not really. No, every time I collected from one, it was like one of every resource that they could get. I don't know. I don't know why this is so awful, but if I have five people in the village, they should be able to get me like 30 obsidian at least or something instead of like a feather. Then I smashed a bunch of marble and used that to make the medium chest in the Lonely Lodge area. This place is growing by the second, but it does help out a ton because we have a centralized storage area. 
And by the end of the day, I headed over to the desert because we are unlocking this manor set. I worked on making a new village over here. It's not exactly in the most flattest part of town, but whatever. And if you remember correctly, the first few stages all rely on village rating. So when I upgraded the village, I'd have to place more stuff down, which is how I unlocked this manor build. I don't even remember what it was. I think it was a manor stable or something like that, but it required a ton of granite. I started building the thing and it was just like, it was huge, but it looks so cool. So I'm really excited about having it for a future village we make. And once I had that thing done, I was able to upgrade the village to level five by the end of this time but I still have nowhere near enough granite. While I'm editing this, this section looks really, really small for the amount of work I had to do. I skipped over a bunch, like I added equipment down and I built like a gateway thing because I was trying to get that village reputation, but I honestly skipped over it because no one really wants to see that. Like I built a cool house and that's kind of what I showed, but if you want me to show the little stuff, let me know. The next day I finished the build on the humble manor and it looks great, but I just can't use it because I'm not using the village. But with the village rating, I still need amber for the upgrades, so I went and found a desert. After grabbing enough rough amber, I upgraded the village to level six. I'll say most of the work these days go from me going back and forth to our actual village to the one we're trying to upgrade in the desert. But when I do get back, I grab beef boss for the village and upgrade it to level seven. That's two upgrades in one day, that was pretty good. Next couple of days, Levi and I went into the caves for the last few upgrades because those ones require those caves. We always need obsidian, like copper and bright core, so we both headed back in to get our inventories full once again. And we don't have any at base because we keep using it on our tools, our charms, and, well, our actual bases upgrades. And after multiple days in these caves, I mean, so many, I'm bored now, we hired a blue squire back at the village. And we are surprisingly close to getting this place to level 10 and being able to move it out of the awful desert. All right, we're at level eight. I rolled up to the village to see the sheer number of dead bodies the villagers had been whacking. Like, I know the nighttime mobs are scary and all, but how are there that many over here? I leave most of the time. But when I did get back, I had everything for the level nine upgrade, except for the village rating, which basically means I have to build another thing. So I had to spend even more days grinding granite for the new build. Isn't it fun just like hitting rocks for two days straight? <clears throat> but yeah, I got quite a bit, okay? I don't know if I like the stacks of 30 though. I kind of missed the 64 from Minecraft because I could carry a lot more if I did that. Day 67, we are building the biggest and the coolest house to date, the Tower Manor. Now this thing is massive, so I'm glad I grabbed a ton of granite. It's also multiple different stories with like an actual castle tower. I mean, it just looks sick. I love this thing. So I cannot wait to build it later, but this did get us to the village rating for level nine and we upgraded. Level 10 was also super easy since we had the rating and we had previously gone into the caves beforehand. So we're level 10 and we got to dance with the villagers. Levi and I also noticed that we unlocked the sickest build. Okay, I thought that tower manor we just built was sick, but but look at this thing! It's huge! Oh my god, look how, look how big it is. Just yeah. press left click. Just... Oh my word! This wait, thing that looks, actually looks so cool. It's so sick! Oh my god, I can't wait to build this. As I said, I'm, I'm really excited to build that, so we need to move this village somewhere else. And by doing that, we started taking down the entire village. I know I say village a lot because the last few days we've been working on the village over and over and over again. We are finally done with this one, okay? We tore it down, building by building. I didn't break my pickaxe, that's a glitch. And then we started scouting for the best flatland area we can put our new base. I saw these like little groups of houses close to our lodge area, and I thought this was perfect. Levi and I went over there, and yeah, this is definitely gonna be the flat area we build our castle. But that's when a spark followed us, okay? This is the first time in a really long time I've followed a spark thinking it was gonna be good. And I was right, okay? We found a golden llama. This is the rarest llama in the game. I mean, of course we were attacked, which caused Levi to hit it, and it ran away from us, so we had to go and chase. But after we killed it, we got the usual crap, except for the fact that we know we got a golden llama. Did you get a golden llama? I don't think so. All right, we got it. Now it's time we moved in. We demolished the little area that was here and cleared out the land for the new base. We wanted that sick castle we saw earlier, and I'm definitely gonna be using this as my home. 
Levi can go live in the log cabin place I made. But for now, he's helping me build this thing, okay? We have got to tag team this. There, there was just so much area. The, the sheer amount of granite we need for this build is crazy. There was like a house that we built up. It was like two layers and then there's like a hallway that leads to another tower that we also built up and I never fell off of. And then another hallway to another tower and then there's like walls on the outside. I mean, the entire thing looks amazing, okay? And of course, I put down a village totem right in the middle because I have to get this one to level 10 as well. <sighs> Can you imagine? having to do three different villages to level 10 okay i mean it's it's not that bad all right by the end of of day 73 i got it to like level five i mean i definitely was slacking a little bit okay levi should probably fire me as the duo but level five is not bad and the next day we went through level six level seven and honestly there was just a lot of waiting for supplies to craft because i have to wait a while for slabs and stuff Unfortunately, it wasn't too exciting because we've done this one, two, th three times now. Yeah, three times. The next day, I was also able to get it to level eight. We barely bounced around, and now we got to get it to level nine. I need more village rep, which means we have to build again. So we thought, why not make a villager home in the stables, okay? These guys, they're useless to us throughout this entire video, so we may as well treat them like animals. Levi helps me out for another build. We build a stables for the second time this video and upgrade to level 9. I then placed down more equipment and stuff to help with the rep and got the village to level 10 for the third time. How many days has it been? How many days have I actually been working on getting a village to level 10? I really need someone to comment below how long I actually spent on this because it was crazy. Then he and I went ahead and built another house for the back because we're probably going to turn it into like the equipment shed. Imagine how much granite this took. This entire place, I mean, over like 1k spent on this singular part of the map. That amount of granite per inventory is insanity. Although the place does look sick at the end of the day. All right, now on to some fun days. This time I actually tackle the ice caves. These things are so deadly, but I need them for advancing. I researched some new charms and figured out I could make some crossbows, which will help a ton in the caves. So I made a buttload of arrows, got my defense to 21 and hearts to 15 and headed out to go take on these caves. When I got in there, I mined a bunch of iron and sapphire and for the first time, I'm actually going to take it home. The skeletons in the cave were no match to me, especially with the 20 damage headshot from the bow. I didn't realize the headshot actually buffed it. I would have been using this thing way earlier. Although the mobs in here are still powered up compared to even the desert, so I have to be terrified while walking through these caves. A full inventory of stuff later, I returned home because I broke my pickaxe on accident. Which worked out great because I accidentally found a frozen brute scale. I didn't even know that was possible. When I got back to base, I smelted the iron ore and I unlocked the last of the purple items on our list. Throughout the entire video, we have been chilling with having better pickaxes and axes than our swords and crossbows. But finally, the swords and crossbows have caught up. Purple is the best stuff in the game, so I went around, made my purple sword, made my crossbow, I made everything I could possibly need, including a new charm with that frozen fruit scale, so I can survive the caves even longer and without spicy burgers. Back to the caves, we need those ores because they be doing different, all right? We need these ores for everything, alongside the mobs that were in here, because those things are still doing damage. I saw some wolves that were like made out of bones. I didn't even know those were in the game, but the minute I tried to fight one, I got hit for like six hearts. There were two of these guys here. Apparently, I am still very, very weak. I don't, I don't even know how I'm still weak, but it's bad. It's really bad. I had to fight off even more dogs, which gave me cursed bones. I have no idea what those are used for, but Trust me, they are awesome later. And when I finally got out of there and headed back home, I had a full chest of iron, like an entire chest in our Lonely Lodge storage system full of iron. It was crazy. I got so much stuff. And then I went back to checking out the charms because by the end of this video, I want to have beaten every single boss, all of the brutes, the grassland brute, the desert brute, and the frozen brute. But the best charm that I could find required malachite, which I didn't even know it was a thing. I looked it up and it's actually on top of the giant snow peak I was at earlier. 
So I made a grapple finally in hopes to scale the ice wall the next day. It's time for flying machine V3. All right, we made our own flying machine that took off without us because I misplaced the balloon. Look, I know it's floating up there, but I did take a balloon to go up and eventually got back on and made it a two giant balloon ship. All right, it's awesome. I put down my bench, I turned it on, and we are now flying off to the ice mount. So close, so close. Why did it have to boot me off again, bro? It's, it's crazy. I really just wanted to fly in a plane. I'm so defeated at this point. Like, I'm actually watching myself do this, and I know I was defeated in the game as well while doing it. I don't, I don't even know. I mean, we, we have the grappler, so we got to the wall and used the ice grappler wall thing. I don't, I'm so defeated, man. I don't even want to do this anymore. I wanted to fly. But as I said, I used the grappler to get over the Game of Thrones ice wall to find Malachite. Now, Malachite is this green little ore on top of this place, and I really don't know why it's up here, but we need it. So throughout the night and days, I just went around grabbing as much as I possibly could. It's quite rare up here. I mean, not rare, but like it's not extremely easy to find, I'd say. It's not everywhere up here. Throughout the mission, I also had to start fighting like winter wolves, which I didn't even know were a thing. And then these like nightly skeletons rolled up on me. I mean, obviously I'm better. I'm more strapped nowadays. But if I ran into these when I was gathering frost pine back in the day, I'd be so dead. Although I did get the Malachite. So when I was back at base, I made the new charm of resilience. This thing is awesome. It's purple. I've got like 35 defense now and 17 hearts. I don't even know. Is that, I think it's good. I mean, it's gotta be good. I've got like two purple charms. I could probably survive anything at this point. Well, except an airplane. The start of day 87, I found a rainbow near the base. Okay, and I went over there and I Billy bounced on the Lego men and I got a prize. Okay, I got some pies. I got some pizza, which is all sick, but it is just food. Uh, still, these drops, like, they could be a lot better, but this is probably the best one we got because I got pizza. But now that we've got a ton of iron bars unlocked, I need bright core to make them because it takes one iron ore or one copper ore even and two bright core for each of them to make one ingot, which is a terrible trade-off. So I have to go all the way back into the desert caves, fight off hordes of skeletons just to get to this sweet, sweet light bulb ore. They really need to make this a one-to-one -one ratio. I've got so much of this bright core and yet I can only make so little bars. But I wasn't doing that for nothing, all right? I'm getting these iron bars for a reason, because I'm going to collect more frost pine so I can make the grand chests over at the new place, the Manor Village, AKA my house of residence, Levi, heck off, I live here, not you. So I'm out here all day and night collecting frost pine only for a brute to scare the bejesus out of me, all right? This should not be here. This should be up on the mountain. For some reason, it's down here with me while I'm just trying to collect stuff. That's not cool. And after that, I get back to base after days of collecting frost pine only for the villagers to not give me anything. They're taking this whole like rent free system way too far. I'm gonna have to start firing them or like burning their house down. I don't know. I, I got to figure it out at this point, but I do head over to the manor and start doing some decorating. Okay. You guys have loved my Minecraft builds to date. So I've decided I'm going to decorate this one manor place as best as I possibly can in Lego Fortnite. Although it does have to be practical. So I start putting down these amazing chests. These are the best chests you can get. Look at how much storage is inside. It's crazy, but I do start decorating the halls and rooms. I make a bar upstairs. There's a lounge area downstairs with like a couch. There's tables, even more chests, which is really cool. I got the halls, which are freshly mopped. I got my own bed in there. We're putting it all, okay? There's even like a tub in the corner for some reason. I, I couldn't find a spot for it but i really wanted to put down the tub i also use the bright core for its intended purpose finally lighting up the area okay this is like the first time i've not had to have a torch in my offhand we're actually running around and being able to see all of the candles lighting up the place which i really love then i set up the equipment shed by moving and adding in all of the essentials all right we got the lumber mills we got the essence table we got like smelters i don't even know the names of them i've forgotten at this point we got the crafting bench which we were able to upgrade fully i if I do another 100 days or something like that, I'm starting from here, okay? Okay, this village is awesome. 
I'll go no tools or anything. I, I, I'll literally start with nothing. But as long as I can stay in this village, I'll do another 100 days. But we are ending that time. We're near the end of the video, okay? Levi and I really need to journey out and find all of the brutes. So we start gathering the stuff that we need for this mission. I got some extra charms. I also made extra charms. Like, I made a totem of immortality. Okay, that's like a, a totem of undying from Minecraft. I literally cannot be dying anymore, all right? I've got shakes. I've got burgers in case I get too hot or too warm in these locations. I grabbed 90 arrows, all right? There's no way I'm going to need 90, but I definitely grabbed a ton. I also figured out that this essence table is like the enchant table. And since today is the exact day that the durability glitch got patched, I decided to enchant my stuff. Two damage buffs on my sword and crossbow, and one durability on each. It really sucks, but you know what? The patch had to happen at some point. Obviously, that wasn't meant to happen, but even now, we don't have the 30% durability buff that actually happened after finishing recording this video, so y'all are lucky if you're playing right now with that 30% durability buff, because I didn't have that. And now it's finally time to take on every single brute. The next three days, I'm going to fight them all. The only issue is they don't have like a predetermined spawn location, so finding them is the hard part. We scoured the land for quite some time until we came across the grassland brute. This is the second time I'm encountering him in this video. But Levi and I together, as prepared as we are, this thing stands no chance. Yeah, just like that, he's he's kind of dead. I mean, the beginning fight where I actually fought him, he was tough. And this one, he was not whatsoever. It's crazy how much I've progressed in this video, but it only gets harder from here. As we go to the Desert Brute and then the Frozen Brute. However, like I said, we have to find him first. So Levi and I split up in the desert until he finally found one by nightfall. This is one step up from the last Brute, so I'm expecting a much better fight. And we took it on right away. I try and make use of the grappler during the fight to avoid his moves, and I think it works pretty well. But yet, still by the end, Levi and I are undefeated. I don't even think I took damage during the fight. Neither did Levi. Like, we're kind of going crazy. Our weapons are amazing. And yet, there's still one that has terrified me up until this point. The Frost Brute our day 100 challenge and it starts or ends here We did it. We conquered LEGO Fortnite in 100 days. 
If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that like button down below, as well as subscribe to the channel. If you want 200 days of this, 20,000 likes, and 1,000 comments, and I will attempt this again in future updates. Comment your thoughts down below on LEGO Fortnite and whether it actually stacks up to Minecraft, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.